What a set. Split with the energy. Like, these guys are the defending world champs. That's, uh, I was expecting some good games today. Yeah. I cannot say that I was expecting that. I'm actually <laughs> going to try and defend Ron here. I, I think that any of us in that situation would have said basically the exact same thing. And yeah. probably felt pretty confident about yeah. it. I'll tell you what. Uh, energy needs to reevaluate some things. That's that's pretty clear to me. I don't know what's going on there. Still Death of Ron, but as we continue on, it's well, El it's uh, Rival taking on Elevate. And this is a big match for these teams because Rival hasn't had the best start to this split. Elevate has. They're sitting tied for, they were tied for third coming in today. So if Elevate can find a 2-0 here, that means that not only are they continuing their rise, they'd go up to 10 points, but they're keeping Rival down. Rival being one of those teams that's, that's trying to break their way back into that top four. Yeah, um, I'm never going to do this one again. Let's hit the picks and cool. bands real quick and see what winds up going on. Because this is a very, very big game for both these squads, as you just highlighted. Um, and again, sort of like we did uh, two sets ago, I'm going to zoom out again from these numbers and just say this is about the eye test. Uh, rival needs to beat Elevate here to just show us which rival they actually are. And Elevate needs to show us, is it a flash in the pan? These past couple of weeks, they beat some teams they're not supposed to, and they haven't lost to the teams that are lower end like we're used to. Is Elevate the real deal this time around? This is definitely the test for me because, yep. you know, you can play up to teams above you, you can play down to teams below you, but the teams that are even with you, and right now in my mind, Rival and Elevate are playing at a pretty comparable level. Mm -hmm. So who's going to end up on top? Even a split here, I think, is positive for Elevate. Yeah. I, just making sure that Rival cannot pick up two points against them and catch up because that's effectively four points if they're the ones chasing you. Well, Ryzen and Osiris are the bands for Rival, and Elevate going to go ahead and pound the Cirquette and the RTO, leaving Rival with the Kukulin. Now, this is likely to be in the hands of Deathwalker, but we'll leave an open mind. I just In that jungle, I feel like uh, even with the warrior men and everything happening, still that jungle position for Rival, very assassin-oriented. Yes, I agree. Ice Ice Baby likes to play those those hyper carries at times, the Kali, things like that. Can also play the early game, try and snowball it with something like Fenrir, who he really broke onto the scene mm -hmm. with a while ago, so pretty versatile in that jungle, but I think I prefer to see him on those assassins. Well, a Thoth and the Arlong Shen, the selections for Elevate, uh, that new mid laner for Elevate has looked really strong, and Thoth is one of those options that you give a player in that mid lane when you want him to be a hard carry. Absolutely, and Death Panther has proven that he definitely has that in his god pool, and with Arlong Shen as well, which has such great setup for Thoth from a distance, you can mm -hmm. knock up, you can root, excellent pick between the two. Oh, yeah, and Fafnir, sure, that's all well and good, but I, I love I love the Hunbat selection here. Um, one of Cherio's premier assassins, and also yep. just a character that can control a team fight fantastically. I've always loved the monkey, and I think today is no exception. I, I like the Hunbats here as well. Now, I'm interested in Rival, if this is going to be Hu Yi in the mid lane for Wolfie. Wolfie, one of the premier mid lane hunter players. Yeah. This is this seems to me to be a flex pick for Rival because with the Fafnir, this opens up the door for them to say, we'll take another hunter or, or a magical hunter mm -hmm. and give that to vote in the duo lane and then have this Fafnir with a double coerce basically for the two auto attack centric characters. Elevate always keeping you on your toes. They're going to select the Freya that we haven't seen in a while yep. uh, with Hunbat selected that ensures that we're going to see her in the hunter roll, but also Elevate keeping everybody on their toes. Elevate forced out this Nox ban that we see here. Uh, we've really seen a love to put her in the support role, and I laugh, but it's been very, very successful. It so has. rival forces, by keeping an odd god pool like that, you force your opponent's hand. Yes, and that, and that is a Nox support ban, no doubt, with a Thoth pick, as well as that's going to be Dardes every yeah. time on Nox if it's Elevate. You open up the door for yourself to get some better picks and picks and bans, as you mentioned. Works out for them. Odin and Giannis for rival. Not a lot of uh, gods that can get out of Odin Cage. It's going to be Naja. So Erlong Shen support, Hunbat solo, maybe? Um, so a jungle? Naja support, Naja solo are two very real Ooh, things. Yeah, Naja support. You put Naja in the solo lane, you give him off to a lead, he becomes a very, we were actually arguing about this term, Naja can be a hyper carry in the late game with the Flaming Spear. He can also be a fantastic support. Dardes, close your eyes. Where's Naja going? I think support. I think I, if my eyes are closed. I F think dot, support as well. We'll uh, attest to it. I think it's going to be support. 
And it is. It is support. Again, Dardes, this is so. This is really exciting because I always talk about staying ahead of the meta and changing things up, but not just for weirdness sake. Now, Naja brings a lot to the table. We've seen him repeatedly, but always in an aggressive way. Naja, this time around, going to be played in a support role. I think he's got a lot of tools to do so. Yeah, he's got a stun that can initiate, but the most important thing about Naja's kit is definitely that win Fire Wheels ultimate. Taking a key member of the enemy composition up out of the fight for an extended period of time. Now, the, the underutilized part, I think, of Naja's supports kit is that ring bounce. I mean, that is a big protection shred Slow. on all the targets. It slows them as well. Can be an excellent initiator. It can be in the thick of things once he gets some items online, but it does take a little bit for him to become tanky. One of the things also, you know, that might not vibe well for the uh, support position for Naja is the Flaming Spear. Well, here's kind of the other side of it. Flaming Spear allows you to still give out some damage, even without the most damaging abilities. One of the best steroids in the game. But since the change that happened oh so long ago at this point, he can now heal himself up. So he initiates, gets turned on, heals up, strips protections, finds somebody to take out of the team fight, and everybody below him just sort of wreaks havoc. And I love what Elevate's done on the left side of the map with this Naja support. They proxy the wave between the towers because Naja has such excellent early clear between the the ring bounce and that big AOE splash of damage on the auto attack chain. That allows him and Jermaine to go into the jungle, strip away both buffs on the left-hand side and get back to lane without missing a single minion. That's great efficiency so far, and Rival didn't punish them for it. One of the other interesting things that I want to touch on about picks and bans specifically was it was very important for Elevate to pick a obvious jungler in the first half. Chario, his god pool, is not the largest, and it's very well known. If he's going to play assassins, he's probably on the Naja or the Hun Bats. So by selecting the Hun Bats in the first round, there's no reason for Rival to ban out the Naja, where we've seen a lot of the time some of these characters banned out against Elevate. That's true, and they could have gone the other way around, I suppose. They could have gone Naja. Everyone yeah, would have sure. figured it's yep. jungle, and then they could have given it to Dardes support. And there's a lot to be said for having guys who can play the same gods in different roles I on your it. team. It's a, it kind of reminiscent of the way Eager used to run Erlong Shen, and you didn't know which of the three roles between support, jungle, and solo was going to go but they were going to put it somewhere and going to be effective with it. Yeah, I think the picks and bans phase is some of the more exciting time. It's really exciting for me, you know, seeing people uh, break it down and do stuff. And when you have that ambiguity on your squad, you just have a, another leg up. Look, we know where Giannis is going. He's mid lane, so don't ban any mid laners. But you, having that ambiguity in picks and bans, really important so far. The team's neck and neck, no invades. Well, a little bit of an invade. Vote has sported that speed buff, so... We have seen the speed buff invade, but no uh, no results of the invade as far as gold is concerned. This is Elevate saying we're okay with Rival having pressure on the right-hand side. They went Odin in the jungle. He's got excellent early clear. Cullen, of course, can't really fight once he hits level two. And Vote was in the mid lane, leaving Kallus alone on this left-hand side. But Elevate took that information and said, we're going to go on the left-hand side and do the exact same thing to you as pressure on the left. And this is good back timing from Dardes because this allows him to get closer to full boot He's going to buy boots, too, and come right back. Don't be surprised if you see Elevate start to set up for an invade on that red once more. And I was still, you know, keeping the spotlight on the support Naja. Itemization. I mean, clearly we're not going to see the assassin itemization. Uh, what are you expecting here? I think the Talari boots probably, or the uh, the, uh, the Talari boots probably likely. Maybe some tank boots. Could be tank boots. Could be Talaria. Talaria excellent because of uh, how easy it is to proc those with the long range ring bounce. Could be something like a void shield somewhere in there. So that it finds the ultimate right away onto Ice Ice Baby. And again, there's a little bit of damage, but more importantly, it sets up every Everybody on the ground, Death Panther with the first blood for Elevate over the assist of the support Naja. Three ultimates expended, but for first blood, that's worth it because that speed buff is going to be up shortly. Now, this did allow Rival to pick up their own red and purple on the left-hand side, so Jermaine won't, will not continue that lead on the left quite as much. This catches Vote up and really puts Vote in the lead because he got so much farm by invading on the right-hand side early on. For finding that first blood, luckily for Rival, there's no invade coming from Elevate on the right side of the map. Speed buff has yet to spawn, so Cherio and the rest of the squad couldn't come in and take it away, but... That's exactly what you what uh, Ice Ice Baby can expect for the rest of this game because he doesn't have purification beads. Darda is going to be looking for stuns, and looking for that ult. Now this is uh, this is I think uh, one of the things that we've seen elevate 
for a while now, really just sort of mature over time. And we've seen them all, I, I speak about them sort of improving individually. Dar Darda's and Jermaine started off well, but, uh, but I think they've also improved and have definitely gotten better. But it's the confidence factor that's really doing it for me. Um, sure, you get the obvious, the ability to pick these strange picks and set up for Death Panther off of the uh, support and Anjali, the support knocks. These strange picks come out, but you're also seeing the plays that result. Uh, that are a result of players with a big amount of confidence. I don't think that Jermaine or Dardes have ever lacked confidence in themselves, <laughs> but it's about the confidence they have in the rest of their teammates. This is a this is a Najah support that is not going to be that big initiating factor on the four members where your team really can't mess up following up off of that. It's yeah. This is a lot of trust in your teammates to not only follow up off of your one-man initiation, but also to protect you because Najah support is one that could mm. fall behind very quickly and really become a train wreck faster than you realize. So this is this is Dardes saying that he trusted himself to hit his abilities and not put himself into a bad spot, but sure. in the inevitability that he does, there's the rest of his team's going to be there to back him up. Yeah, I mean, you want to look at this pick sort of like a Sobek in that you have, you know, your, your pluck is sort of like your artillery sash, but the problem is, since Sobek built for uh, being a support, you get out there. You go for the pluck and you miss it, or you hit it and you're in a bad spot. You ult and you sort of walk away. Naja can't do that. So <laughs> you are going to get caught where Naja goes for an interrupt on somebody, hits him with the, with the long-range sash, and then just kind of gets left out. Jermaine, not going to fall for that one. Drops the ward there. And sees Kalis not going to be tricked. Well, with Naja, once you're in, you're in. And yeah, sometimes, you got to commit. And sometimes the enemy team will force you to go in or, or they'll come to you. And yeah. all of a sudden you're in a bad spot. But this is, uh, I've been saying it for a while now, I think that non-Guardian supports and non-Warrior supports are, uh, are a big future in competitive Smite and have a lot of uh, unexplored options yes. for these teams. And, I'm excited to see that Elevate is really uh, is really going wide with that strategy. Not only going with one or two picks there, but clearly I've been working on a multiple multitude of them. It's something you and I have spoken a, a lot about, and you know I, I speak about it in general. Is that there are so many viable gods in in Smite. Viable is different than what's on top. And when you change your composition by selecting two gods, all of a sudden your tier list is shifted with every selection you put you choose because. I mean, Najah is going to be better with gods like Thoth that you're going to set up for, right? And and things like that. So as you select gods, you know, some of these other gods are more and more usable. Jermaine and Dardes uh, stuck in the ring. The O will save Jermaine, but it won't save Dardes. If Down, Dardes, if Dardes hits that ultimate, he's probably still alive at the bottom of that. But that's uh, that's the what we were talking about with yeah. Najah support. And Najah is a character in general. You hit the ult, you do great stuff. You miss the ult, and you don't look too good. That's a little bit rough there. Einstein and Kala's going to be able to pick up oracles for their troubles. So no big deal. One for one so far after that one. No Numbers has been able to get a slight lead for himself on the right side of the map and not able to steal away that speed buff, but still has been able to uh, get that slight XP advantage, partially due to that, uh, that early assist for him on that first blood, but also just because he's got that pressure in the lane. Arlong Shen willing to take those boxing fights pretty well w with that death toll having the double yeah. proc off of his little dog. The double proc and, you know, his little dog, too. Got to be a fan of that one. Hey, the I man know named you are. Him. What did he name him? Bobo. I don't know if I like that. Bobo the dog. It's not my favorite, but it's already done. I mean, I mean he's he's a good dog, like, obviously. Well. I mean, there's no, there's no question there. There's no such thing as a bad dog. But it isn't a good dog name, necessarily, is what I'm saying. Respect that. Collins jumps away as he respects the setup coming out from Dardes. Not going to be subjected to it this time around. Elevate here so far in our ninth minute. Keeping things even with their non-traditional support. Words like jank, words like cheese, words like troll, I'm not a fan of. Because I think that you can take these things out and actually make it happen. Everybody laughed at Dardes when he played knock support. But then they couldn't laugh because they were silent as they died. Just with the sweater today, and you like, I'm not a fan of those words. That was like, you were very uh, teacherly. Watch, I'm today. sending you to detention, boy. You're I'd going. Rather you didn't. You're staying after school. Not again. You're late. And you're going to be late, because you're staying after. Is that a thing a teacher says? No. <laughs> no. 
I used to teach, actually, believe it or not. And I actually, so I used to teach music. Uh-huh. And I've actually taught commentary. Huh? Like, recently in this life. Mm. Believe and it or not. What did you do in past lives? Uh, a lot of things. I mean, a, lo a lot of things, actually. Oh, like any specifics? Or? I used to get a gold fury. Well, that's what Rival's trying to do right now, but Ice Ice Baby's Good zoning job. away Cherio, and Darnas coming around the back. That's that ring toss. Even the damage is respectable. Very much so, without any true damage items. The Talaria going what could be a Breastplate of Valor and hiding the Nemean Lion. I expect uh, a Breastplate for the CDR. Breastplate would certainly be solid. La would lack some health, but uh, that early physical protection would be very valuable up against Ice Ice Baby. Could also be something like a Spectral Armor, which, uh, hey. which, is, which is very good against Odin, but not so great whenever you're locked in the cage because Vote can proc it from a distance, even with his ultimate. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to see the uh, the cooldown reduction breastplate, assuming that we are promised health later on. Because it is a very scary build without the health. Two man gets tagged, but no big deal. Freya, though. It's been a while since we've seen some Freya. Freya used to dominate. And then not so much. And she got a positive change. What chased Freya out? Is it just the, the hunters? The the hunters, the new builds for hunters. She also did have a, a little bit of a nerf whenever she was her, at her most dominant. She saw a nerf right afterwards on the left-hand side. Dardes in some trouble again in that cage. Jermaine up into the Wolfie sky trying to end play it. play all the way from middle lane. I Ooh. saw it happening, and then he comes, and he's not done yet. He finishes it off and gets the second part of the double kill. Vote almost falls to the damage from Jermaine, and if that Bancroft's down is done, that's definitely a kill for Elevate's Hunter. But again, looking, Ice Ice Baby has spent the entirety of the early game on the left side of the map because he wants to cage Dardes every single time. That's two times now that Dardes has not been able to get out of it by hitting his ultimate. And meanwhile, Cherio's just getting the farm. He's a solid level and a half up, which is kind of scary. You know, I, I got I got excited about that Giannis ultimate. I saw him lining it up from the middle lane, right? I knew he was hitting it. By the time the Giannis ult passed, not this direct wall, but the second wall going, not that one, but the second one by the gold fury, I knew it was a hit. You, uh, you, you were positive? I knew it was a hit. I'm happy for you. Thanks, man. Less happy for Dardes, I'm sure. You sure? But I knew it was a hit. Wolfie going for hide of the urchin on the Giannis, and uh, I've been, you know I, I'm a mage player. I don't like building defense because I play mages to see big damage numbers on the on the occasion that I hit my ultimate. But hide of the urchin on Giannis seems to be the least. Uh, it, it, it's the least. It's Offensive. the pairing that makes the least sense to me. I should say, it, Giannis. Oh really? Shouldn't take this much. Shouldn't need a lot of protection based on his positioning. He can okay. get it. He can get in and out of team fights. He doesn't need to be in front of the enemy at any given time because he can throw everything he has over the wall. He can do it from a distance. It, it, I don't think that Wolfie really needs this hide of the urchin because his positioning is has been very solid on this Giannis historically. And I get it, he's ahead. From ahead, hide of the urchin feels very good. But I think I would have rather seen him go for Spear of Desolation here. Use that extra gold to get a little bit of a luxury item that gives you some power, some penetration, and some CDR. And start working towards that Rod of Tahuti. And if he's really worried about the Death Panther's ultimate, which is probably what he's building defense for, then that's what Sona Fall is there. No numbers! I'll tell you where he's got no numbers. And then HP column down for the count before the heal comes out. Nice play there. Three separate dudes. And there's DW walking through. Thanks to uh, a little bit of help from his friends. Wolfie setting up the portal. That's 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 the Giannis that I like to see. The defensive Giannis. Speed buff doesn't get stolen away by Deathwalker, but Cherio decides to pick it up and might be in some trouble now. Horrific emblem means that he has to use purification beads just to escape. I like how that setup just uh, Ice Ice Baby said, hey, what are you guys doing over there? I'm getting some farm. I'm just going to go, um, I'm behind. Now I'm not because I took the enemy, uh, I took uh, I took out uh, the back camps. So, uh, yeah, I'm uh, getting it all. I'm uh, Panda. Have you ever heard Ice Ice Baby talk ever? That's what he sounds like. That is absolutely not what he sounds like. It's exactly what he sounds like. It's nothing what he sounds like, actually. It's truly not. <laughs> it might have been. You never know, dude. Okay. Ice Ice. He, he's basically sitting there going, so uh, you want to throw the ring? Uh, I mean, okay. He's not uh, saying it like that I if he's shield, even uh, saying it. You got a shield. Uh, not concerned. Uh.
Ice doesn't say uh oh, that much. No one says uh oh, that much. Oh, I have. Yes, they do. Have you ever seen some amateur commentary? Well, yeah, but <laughs> it's not even it's not even like that. I'm sure we could watch your VODs back and see you say uh, I would uh, truly hello? like anything but that. <laughs> Same here, honestly. <laughs> Same here. These guys, though, elevate team rival. Elevate's having some trouble. Rival, this is this is an interesting one because I feel like both squads are doing fine. I mean, elevator down three thousand. It doesn't seem like it's impacting anything. Low action, low team fights, no real objectives. In fact, we are going to take a brief pause, real quick, as we reflect on that. Where's the next move? Well, for me, Elevate is still very close to being in this game because all it really needs is Dardes to find one ultimate on Ice Ice Baby or Kalas or even Death Walker and set up for that Wombo combo that, that Elevate has drafted. Even if he could hit a, an ultimate without any sort of setup and, and force out Purification Beads or just take someone up into the sky such as, uh, such as Vote, and then they can one-shot them, that's a huge boost for Elevate. So it's not going to take much in order for them to get back into it. However, Rival just needs to keep doing what they're doing. Cage Dardes, often, all the time. Until Dardes gets a Phantom, then it's not going to be, a, there's not a lot of counterplay to that. Dardes can hit the ultimate, but no one should be really in that cage except for Ice Ice Baby, who's tanky enough to not worry as much about yeah. this Wombo combo. So that makes a lot of sense to me. In fact, Phantom wasn't even picked up by Dardes. It was no numbers who was able to find it. Ice Ice Baby going for the kill, but instead he's sitting there going, well, uh, I guess I'm banished. Uh, okay. So the ultimate comes out, but he trades it out for an ult of Jermaine's. Wolfie throws out an ultimate as well and I, actually ends up clipping Jermaine. I don't mind. Like, the Wolfie ult sucks, but I, I will trade an Odin cage for a frail ult oh. every single time. Without a doubt. I mean, that's a very low cooldown Odin ultimate that is very impactful, yes, but not uh, not going to make or break a team fight necessarily. Whereas that Freya ultimate is so important for Jermaine to be defensive, especially yes. with his purification beads on cooldown for another 30 seconds. It's going to be pretty easy for even Ice Ice without an ultimate to come over and find that kill in combination with foe. Yeah, J Jermaine needs to be the target for the next 60 seconds at the very least. Go kill Jermaine. The Valkyrie is flightless. It's a very big deal right now. Cherio biding his time, trying to keep Kalos in sight. Doesn't want to lose him. Instead, just gets hit by a hammer. Kalos able to get a little bit of a proc. Takes 30 gold. Cherio now looking for the fight. Goes for the overhand smash. The ring toss off the mark. And so just much ado about nothing here in the mid lane. But Kalos and Ice Ice Baby are just keeping Cherio busy while the rest of his team is invading the speed buff. And Cherio has been very farm oriented this game, has not been ganking a lot. In fact, the only assist that he has is off the kill that Dardes started in the jungle. So Cherio has not tried to make an impact in ganks. Elevate looks to, to me to want to team fight with this sort of composition, but I'd like to see them try and be not overly aggressive because they are behind and you don't want to put yourself in a bad spot in the enemy jungle unnecessarily, but Dardes should be looking for a pick onto someone who's a, even a little bit isolated with the rest of his team around because that's what this whole, whole composition is built around is, is Naja ultimate into Final Judgment slash Fear No Evil. Deathwalker already toppling the tier one tower nice and early. A little bit of help from Cherio, I suppose, but Deathwalker just... Uh do, doing doing it. No, Taking the fight directly to No Numbers. And No Numbers has been able to farm pretty well. I mean, he's not. Uh, he, he's down about 700 gold, 800 gold. And that's Death Walker pushing a lot of those creeps under tower. But No Numbers is pretty even in terms of levels. That one death on the right-hand side resulted in a lot of that poke going on to that tower. Cheerio with the aggressive teleport. I was looking for the word. I didn't know which one I wanted to use. But it was very aggressive. I like that word. Aggressive? Mm -hmm. I like aggressive. Aggression. That's okay. Aggressive. Okay. Aggro. Ugh. agro five -shin. That's that's uh that's my old word. You are the absolute worst. Agro used to spell his name with a five instead of an S because he thought it was cool. No, it's because it wasn't available he on thought Xbox it was cool. Live. He, he thought it was cool. Yeah. 
It wasn't available. Ice Ice Baby forcing back Cherio, and this is just Rival continuing to play aggressive in the enemy jungle and daring Elevate uh -oh. to step up to them, but Dardai's gonna find that Sash and does force out the ring from Ice Ice Baby, so a small win, but a look at what the rest of Rival's doing. Because Ice Ice Baby's playing so aggressive there because the rest of his team is just doing the portal demon and Elevate's nowhere close. That's what we saw earlier in that mid lane, right? Where we saw a little bit, Kalos just sort of sitting there throwing hammers, looking very bored, and then all of a sudden there's no right jungle for Elevate to go take because Team Rival completely just obliterated it. We're seeing a lot of sort of distraction, a lot of zonage just very easily. Rival in here gonna get rid of the vision. And that'll, that should trigger Elevate to make the rotation at the very least. And they will, but the jump away makes Fafnir safe and sound. Elevate, they're down 4,000 gold without an objective kill. I mean, this they have to make a move. I understand your Thoth and Freya, your late game, but you gotta do something. You can't sit on your hands the whole game. I agree. Elevate's gotta do something, and they really haven't done much of anything this game since that really nice play for First Blood on the by the Fire Elementals. They've allowed Rival to take jungle buff after jungle buff on the right hand side without much recourse, with no numbers realizing that Ice and Deathwalker on the right-hand side, Elevate should be playing aggressive and looking for something on the left. Pull Gold Fury, pull yeah. Elevate, pull Rival into you, do something in order to get the action going in your favor. You have a fear no evil. You have a fear no evil. Any counter initiation is kaput. Elevate finally start the Gold Fury. Now here comes somebody through the portal and it's gonna be taken. Elevate all the way. That's the right move they need to do. Now disengage. Big Ooh. jump up. Jermaine could be in trouble if he lands before the tower. Lands right there. Wolfie turns around. Nice shot. And to safety he goes. Wolfie just got an ultimate two blinks and a kill with one ult. All by himself. That was crazy. He's level 19. Just chased out three members the power of, of the Elevate. Honest, and now because they lost so much, not only Jermaine, but the two blink relics from and Dart as his ultimate. He got another ultimate off of yeah. that as well. Now Rival gets a siege. And the tier two tower under attack. Boat shoots down the sun. Snow number's in trouble. Gonna walk away safely away from the tier two tower. Nothing Team Rival can do. Look at Deathwalker. He's 1v4, and he's gonna get a kill. No, the stun from Dardez. Kalos is. is gonna be the one to clean it up. Do Dardez dies there They're not supposed the to push. do this. This, this happens a lot. I was about to say nothing Team Marvel can do after this tier two tower because this is not how this is supposed to go. The, the, the Smite has a very specific set of, of rules that you follow. You take the gold tree and force somebody to use a lot of their uh, a lot of their tools and then the enemy team takes tier one, maybe tier two if they win the team fight. And that's all they take because the enemy is supposed to retreat and not die. Well, Deathwalker just kind of 1v4'd and got Cherio killed. And that's why that, that Phoenix Siege opens up. Dardez as well, who stepped up to try and help Cherio out. Elevate, j for me, just didn't look like themselves th so far this game. Right. They just haven't looked like themselves. Elevate does best when they're playing aggressive, when they're forcing you into chaotic situations because they thrive in that chaos. This was a... This was Rivals' style of game. This was meticulous. It was uh, it was slower, and this is it's a kind of funny juxtaposition because Rival used to thrive on the fast kill games, where the less strategy, the better. We're just going to try and out mechanics you. Now Rival has grown into a team that can still play in those games, but really prefers to just beat you outright. And that's what they've done so far. Portal for Deathwalker to go. Say what up to Jermaine. Jermaine takes to the sky. Deathwalker on the other side, waiting Ooh. for him. Wolfie just barely getting out. There's the blink phone for the monkey, but the age is to avoid the nonsense. Now Cherry gonna get chased out as well. Well, Deathwalker involves himself with three other players. Vote will find Cherry and Jermaine. The two hunters end up picking up the two members. Overextended on each side ends up being more worth it for Elevate though, because Jermaine gets a kill onto a very uh, healthy Deathwalker. That was dangerous. Jumping over the wall with the shield. Ice Ice maybe should have been punished. But Elevate have no intentions of sending the boy to his room. Instead, they just walk away. Now around the back, no numbers coming with Jermaine. Meanwhile, Vote working on this tier two tower on right. A real damage on Ice Ice Baby. And as a result, Elevate again, just forced off of an objective that they can't really defend. All of a sudden, this gold lead is about 9,000. It feels like Elevate sort of brought this, they, they, they brought the composition out and they proof of concepted us for, for the first blood. And it's like, you, ever, you know, when, when people invent things, they bring out a prototype. They come out with a proof of concept where it's like, 
hey, our idea is Najah's support. Let's show you how it works. We ult somebody, they come down, and they get hit with a big Thoth ult. But then everything else about it is broken. And later on, maybe we'll fix it. <laughs> now, in one way, yes, but I think that a lot of credit goes to Ice Ice Baby in the way that he identified where he needs to be on the map sure. and just shut the composition down early. I think that his aggressiveness on the left, killing Dardez back-to-back -back with cages off blink engagements, really made Dardez reconsider how aggressive he was being in this game and sucked the, sucked the sails out of Elevate's momentum and strategy and really put them on the back foot where they've remained for the rest of this game. I can see that. 0-4-1, not the most respectable slash line. Still, I don't think it's a representative of this composition, but a oh. great <laughs> ultimate coming out from the solo lane. And Wolfie by himself trying to chase down the jungle. Naja support comes through and controls the one-man army. Darda is now in trouble and he'll likely fall for it. He does, credit to vote. He's one down, the rest of his team being aggressed on, but finally Team Rival gonna get on out of there and look for the retreat. Portal Demon's up, and that means that even, the, despite the fact that Wolfie's pretty low on health, he'll be able to back, use this portal, and get right back in. This is like, how do you think Giannis feels whenever his portal is just worse than this big one? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, well, uh, it's kinda, you know, uh, portal envy. Yeah, yeah, I'd imagine so, but. I don't know, you can't, you can't play the comparison game too often. Just saying. Compare yourself to other people. That's how you keep yourself down. It's actually, uh, I'm, I'm not even joking here. You're, you're giving me this, like, face like I'm joking around. But one of the, one of the, uh, one of the key points to happiness is, is not playing the comparison oh, game. Oh, it's not a teacher sweater. It's like a therapist sweater. Everybody is on okay. their own vessel that is their life. You are your own main character. Everybody in your life is a supporting staff, a supporting character. You are the only one that can drive the story. So when you're looking at things, don't don't compare yourself to others. Team Rivals shouldn't look at Elevate and say, well, hey, man, they're, they're better at this than us. They're worse than us than us. They should just say, hey, we have 10,000 gold in the lead. We just took our first gold figure of the game. We should be happy about that. Thank you, Dr. Dot. I appreciate it. Drive Dr. Dot. Woo! What can I say? Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> if you could see the, the motion that Tom was making, they were just as ridiculous as the noise, which is impressive in its own right. I don't know right. what you're talking about. Rival, uh, again, going back to where things went wrong for Elevate, I think a lot of credit is due to Ice Ice Baby, but Elevate, for me, just needs to get what it, Maybe Dardes isn't... Maybe this composition... It, they aren't as comfortable with it as it initially looked, and whenever that initial momentum went away, that Elevate played a little bit back because of how uncomfortable they are with it, or they just never got off to a roll. Either way, Elevate can definitely play at a higher level than this. Yeah, it, absolutely. It can play more aggressive than this. Uh, I really hope that we see a team composition from them in game two that, uh, that ends up being a little bit more, because uh, this is their style, so I don't want to say more their style, but allows them to play the way they excel. I like the Naja support, but I don't, and I like the Freya, but I don't like them together in a world where Thoth is the middle lane. I think that's what it comes down to. This is Elevate style, but they're not balancing the composition. They can't be as aggressive as you want them to be with Freya at level 10, right? Well, they, they're worried about having too much physical damage. That's why they sure. go something like Freya, and, and none of the magical ADCs really provide that much early damage. Soul probably would have been the best magical ADC because not only is it better pressure in the early game, but it well, also no has numbers the best follow-up. Jean Queer, I'll watch. I, I, so Soul probably the best there because it has follow up off of Naja Ultimate. I'm not even kidding. As well, I, I I know, and that makes me sad. Well, Deathwalker and his buddy Ice Ice just gonna walk up in there, drop the ring on top of the mid lane Phoenix. There's the ultimate from Chero defensively, forcing the beads out of oh! who just do not care. Number five for the Hunter out of Scotland, and Team Rival just continuing their reign of terror this entire game. Just. Have not looked, and the number one thing it is for, for Team Rival for me here, and 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 all five guys, and I guess the coach, Alpha Jackal, as well, deserve this shout-out. Team Rival have looked not great this split, right? Mm -hmm. Their win-loss, not fantastic. 
this game, we've said this is their litmus test. This is one of their last chances to actually do it. They look as calm as a cucumber. There's no issue. I don't see any oh no moments here. Darn is able to fight down Deathwalker, but it's already, you know, they already got the Phoenix, two players down. Team Rival do not look concerned at a moment in their season when this is the, the perhaps the most important game they'll play. Yeah, I, I agree with you. They look, uh, I'm not going to go as far as bored, but in, right. con in control this yeah. entire time, no doubt. Dardaz in trouble. His vote goes in, but Dardaz is going to turn it around. There's the Naja ultimate. What's waiting for him on the bottom? Not Nothing. a lot of damage. Nothing. Player's already dead. Dardaz tanking up a little bit with the nonsense from Ice Ice Baby. Cherry on the back end. Looking for Wolfie. No crit. And Death Panther able to take down Vote. Big play. Jump over the Wolfie nonsense. And the self banish. Not good enough. Overhand. Whack. And Wolfie goes down. So number five. Elevate fighting back into it. And this is kind of what you got to be afraid of for this Elevate roster. Is that, listen, Jermaine, he's a Freya now. Death Panther is a Thoth. And these guys are level 20. Thoth 19, but he'll be there soon. This is scary. Team Rival in control the whole game. Doesn't matter when you have a Freya level 20 building full items. It's true. And uh, almost uh, he's done with the first five items. I imagine it's going to be a Rod of Tahuti in that sixth slot. So that will be scary. Death Panther starting on his Rod of Tahuti as well. But Wolfie's full build. Vote is full build. As soon as those guys comes up, that left side Phoenix probably not going to last too long. Sure. Unless Jermaine gets a multi kill. And that is a very big reality. I mean, not even just talking about the character itself, but it's also Jermaine we're talking about. One of the, you know, perhaps surprise, but Jermaine is one of these guys, whether you, whether the fans at home realized it back then or not, Jermaine is one of the hunters where when you're hanging out with the pros at LAN, everybody sits there and goes, yeah, Jermaine would solo. Yeah, Jermaine's that good. But he's, he's, he's losing. He's number seven. Doesn't matter. Jermaine's one of the best of us. Like, that's scary. Yeah, Jermaine has always uh, commanded respect from the rest of the SPL. And, and for good reason. The guy's incredibly talented in a 1v1 and is certainly uh, becoming a better team fighter, a better team player as well. It's fun and watching it, him grow. It's a, big, uh, it's a big reason why Elevate is currently tied for third. I mean, Elevate... Dardes and Jermaine, the Bruise brothers, they took this team from Les Miamondons and they, they've grown into something else. And they've those two players have had a multitude of other players surrounding them, yep. some good, some bad, and they have just created a roster and also grown themselves. And like I said, I mean, Jermaine, you, you said it best. He's always commanded the respect. I was talking to Ice Ice Baby at DreamHack, and he was like, Jermaine, uh, he's really that good. Uh, he's just that strong. Uh, Got to be careful. He might have said that, but I doubt it was like that. I just don't. Where did this come from? It's exactly what he sounds like. It's really not. Prove it. Okay. I I'm mean, sure right we've now. Got plenty of it. No, I can't right now. Yeah, that's we're what we're I busy casting. That's what I thought. Team Rival, they're, uh, in Ice Size Baby's words, walking up the left side lane. What? I can't do this anymore. Elevate here need to make a good defense on the back of Cherio. His ultimate has been sort of used to isolate individuals. I need to see it in the front line. Uh, in the front line. I want to see this uh, Fear No Evil completely disrupt Team Rival and then all in on a player they could actually kill instead of Cherio trying to drop it in the middle of a half and half and then try to chase down a kill by himself. Mid Phoenix goes down. Death Panther off the mark with that ultimate. That's huge because he's doing relevant damage now. He finished Rod of Tahuti and was doing excellent poke damage, but now without that ultimate, that's a lot of what Elevate wants to do off the table. Yeah, and right now, Elevate still playing defense. Kalas here. Saw comes down to this team fight, which, again, I need to say, Elevate can absolutely win this team fight and then just march down. They probably don't win after that, but they get at least two Phoenixes. Yeah. Absolutely a real possibility. That is true. However, they are lacking some objective damage. No true uh, physical hunter. Jermaine on the Freya will be able to push down those towers quite as quickly. So, Rival. Naja can shred them. Does Titan's, Titan's Bane. Bane. It's the only power, though. Uh, flaming Spear. <laughs> flaming Spear, man. Super attack speed. Super, just one of the best steroids in the game. I like it a lot. Is it enough? Of course, this is all pending the team fight. 33 minutes in, team rival up a slew, about eight kills here. 
Up over 10,000 gold, and here comes the blink in from the Odin player. Ice Eyes Baby setting up the mid lane. Jermaine brought down to a sliver of HP off of one ability. The left side of Phoenix down for the count as well. All three birds are gone. There's the ultimate out of Cherio. A little bit late, but everybody here under assault. DW pushing players around and taking them all the way down. Titan still relatively healthy though, Ryan. Wolfie gets a kill, and that might be the end of it. Dardes just didn't hit the, the ultimate. Suns. suns come down. The Titan getting low. Cherry will find one, but at the end, Rival end up on top in a game where they were in control basically from the get-go. Yeah, the, the Suns were a big So, very interesting. If if those Suns, if Vote uses the Suns underneath the Phoenix, I don't think the Titan dies there. We saw two kills on the side of uh, uh, they were dead rival players, excuse me. I don't know what happens there if the Suns are unavailable. Well, rival, as I mentioned, like we were talking <clears throat> about, Naja, great proof of concept. Right off the bat, they get first blood, and rival are just kind of like... Got it. All right. That's fine. You know, <laughs> a quick sniff, and they move on, and they're right back into it. That, that is just staying really calm and collected, despite not having the best start to the season, as you mentioned. I, I have no beef with the composition. I think a lot of people are going to sit here and, you know, just look at what went wrong and say, well, I don't even need to watch the game. They picked Najah's support. I don't care. I think that was fine. I, I think some of the pairing might have been awkward, but... Going forward, I do want to see some more of this Najah support. Yeah. I think it's certainly something that this team specifically can do, let alone the rest of the league. Uh, we did see, was it so, somebody else wound up trying the, uh, the Nox support once? Was it Emilzy? Maybe. I, I know Emilzy has gone for a lot of health support and things like that. I, I'm pretty sure Dardes still has his, his stamp. He on is the, the Nox, Nox support, support, for sure. But it has spread a little bit. We'll see if the Nox.